horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver. Let's go, big fella. There was no stagecoach in sight, but a guard and driver lay beside the trail in the heat of the midday sun. The guard was dead. The driver, wounded several times, was dying. He heard the sound of approaching hoofbeats and thought the outlaws who had driven off the stagecoach were returning. He tried to raise his gun, but he was too weak. He could barely turn his head to watch as the two men drew rein. He saw that one man was an Indian. The other wore a mask. One fellow still alive. I'll take care of him, fellow. See about the other man. Uh, look like him dead. Go, go ahead, you polecats. Shoot me again. No one is going to shoot you again. I want to help you. You're, you're masked. Nevertheless, I'm on your side. I want to see the men who shot you punished. How about that man, fellow? I'm dead, Kimasabi. Someone will hang. Maybe you help this fellow. You can't help me. Too far gone. Do you know who shot you? No. Faces covered. Bandanas. So you couldn't see their faces? No, they they shot us. Drove off our stagecoach. I I'm cold. If no good bandage wound. Cold and dark. Gone. Too bad he couldn't have told more about the highwaymen. Then come, Kimosabi. Yes, yeah, several men. And ride plenty fast. Too far away to tell how many. Five, there seems to be six, maybe seven. The outlaws come back. Hold the tunnel. Don't draw your gun. I'm not going to try to fight that many. Get ready to ride. Steady there, Silver. Steady, boy. Them fellas outlaws, them ride in plenty wide circle. Yes, Toto. The tracks of the men who killed this guard and driver head in the opposite direction. Oh, them see us. Let them get a little closer before we start. Why you watch them, Kimasabi? I thought I saw the sun reflect from something. Something like a badge. Maybe them lawmen. Yes, they are, Toto. The man in front is wearing a badge. He's a sheriff or a deputy. Maybe them think we kill guard driver. We'll not wait to find out. Easy, 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 easy fella. Monsieur! As the Lone Ranger and Toto rode north from the stagecoach trail, the sheriff and his posse approaching along the trail from the direction of the town of Ranceville opened fire with their six guns. 
even though the distance was too great for any hope of accurate shooting. The lawman drew rein beside the fallen guard and driver. Oh, 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 oh. No use chasing them, boys. Their horses are too fast for us. Yeah, here's the reason why the stagecoach didn't show up on schedule, Sheriff. Oh, oh steady. Uh, take a look at the garden driver, eh? Do you reckon they were shot by the critters we saw riding away? I don't know, Sam. The guard's dead. Yes, who's the driver? The big question is, where's the stagecoach? Well, these tracks on the road look like it was turned off the trail and headed north. That's the direction those two men hightailed as we rode up. Well, we'll try to follow him. I don't think we'll get far, Sheriff. The ground's too hard to show any tracks. It's mostly rock. Come on, boys, get mounted. Right. Uh, let's go. Come on. Get up. Meanwhile, six horses, cruelly driven, pulled the bouncing stagecoach across the hard ground. Two men rode on the stage with their horses tied behind. Six other men rode alongside. This is far enough, Red. Rain in the team. Oh! 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 I hope there's enough cash in the mail to make this job worthwhile. You men don't just stand around. Rip open the sacks and dump the mail in a pile on the ground so we can go through with it. Hey, left. John Hitch, the state team. Yes, Blackie. Turn the horses loose. You said something about setting fire to the state. That's what Big Bill wants us to do. Blasco and his outlaw gang went to work. The mail sacks were ripped open and the letters stuffed out. Then the men sat on the ground and opened each letter to search for cash. The cash that was found was turned over to Lasco to be divided later. Here's five dollars in this one. Uh, we're not getting rich on what we're finding. Well, the horses are free. Say the word when you want the stagecoach set a fire. Wait until we're through with this mail. We don't want someone to see the smoke and come to investigate. Give us a hand with these letters, Blackie. We don't want to be here all day. Right. Grab an armful and open them up. Got a knife? Yeah. Anyone know if we left the guard and drive it dead? No. Well, it doesn't matter. Neither of them had a look at our faces. Well, what about Big Bill? Well, what about him? Did he say we were to kill the garden driver? He didn't say anything about him. All he wanted was to burn the stagecoach. Suggested going through the mail for cash. Well, he ought to pay plenty for this job. He agreed to pay plenty. Why? What do you mean, Blackie? Why is Big Bill willing to pay to have the stagecoach burned? Well, he didn't say. But I'll tell you this. Big Bill's playing for high stakes. I don't know what he wants of any more money. He's already got a big income as a lawyer, and on top of that, he owns a bank in Ransford. Well, maybe he's got a grudge against Jim Mosley. Well, maybe. Maybe he wants to smash the Mosley stage line. I wouldn't know. Whether that's what he wants or not, that's what he'll do if we keep on burning the stagecoach. Ten bucks in this envelope. Well, don't spend the day looking at it. Pass it over and get on with the job. The Lone Ranger and Tuttle rode until dark without finding any sign of tracks of the stagecoach or the men who had stolen it. That night in camp, the masked man made a decision. In the morning, Tuttle, I'm going into Ranchville. Oh? You wear disguise? Yes, I have the clothing of an Easterner in my saddlebags. I'll wear that. Oh, Eastern men, not have tan face like you. <laughs> I'll use makeup, Tuttle. I'll be a real pale face with a touch of fresh sunburn. A sheriff sees silver when we ride away from stage trail. Maybe him see horse in town. Maybe not. Same one. Our box of theatrical makeup will take care of that. We'll give Silver a few spots of color. Uh, why you go to town? I want to know if the stolen stagecoach has been found and if there's any hope of finding the men who killed that garden driver. Also, I'd like to know why those killers stole the coach instead of simply looting it. Oh. May help if I find out where the stage carried. Were there passengers on board? Was there a special cargo? Plenty question, King Masabi. That's why I'm going to Ranceville in the morning. Noon of the next day found Jim Mosley, owner of the stage line, at his desk. The loss of the stage and horses had been a hard blow. But even worse was the loss of his two friends, the guard and driver who had been killed. As the door opened, Jim looked up. Hello, Dave. Oh, it's you, Jim. The sheriff stopped me as I passed his office. He said to tell you that he's sending out another posse this afternoon to look for the stage and team and the killers. Jay and I have been trying to figure out why that stage was attacked. As far as I knew, there was nothing of value on board. The sheriff thought the thieves might have been after the mail. The mail doesn't hold enough cash to attract high women. Those cooks didn't care about the mail. They were out to hurt me. 
That's why they made off with the stage and team. Why do you think that? It all fits in. You see, Jane, a few months ago when I was in the bank, Big Bill Jennings called me into his office. He told me about an eastern outfit that was interested in buying the stage line. I didn't know about that. I never mentioned it because I didn't intend to sell. I told Big Bill so. He wrote to the Easterners, and they wrote back. They made a definite offer. I turned it down flat. Was the offer a fair one? Not by a jug fool. It wouldn't pay for the coaches and horses. And my government franchise is worth more than all the rolling stock. What did Mr. Jennings think about it? Well, he said I'd better think it over real careful. He said those big eastern syndicates had ways of getting what they wanted he hinted that they could maybe bribe some people and take the franchise away from her. Oh, no. Then uh, there was a third letter from the East. A final offer. Take it or leave it. Well, I didn't take it. Big Bill said I might be in for some trouble. Well, you know what happened. Do you think that Eastern Syndicate hired outlaws to attack the state? Yes, I do. They're out to break me. But, Dad, I can't... The truth came to me when I saw an Easterner go past the window. He's a stranger in town. I figure he's a man named Tuppen, who's been writing the big bill. Dad, I saw that man. He he was going into the bank. There, you see. And, and Dad, he was in the store a little while ago. Jeb told me he was asking questions about you. Well, Sunder, now I know I'm right. He's the one who's behind the murder of poor Pete and Slim. I can't believe anyone would go that far to... To buy out a little stagecoach It's line. the franchise, Jane. My franchise is worth big money. And it'll be worth a lot more in years to come. I... Great Scott. Look out that window. The Easter. He's crossing the street, heading straight for our door. Where's my gun? Dad, please. I had it here in the desk drawer. Here it is. Now I'm ready for him. Afternoon. Step right in, mister. As the Lone Ranger, disguised as an Easterner, stepped into the office... Jim Mosley held his gun out of sight behind the desk. He waited for the visitor to speak. I'm looking for Jim Mosley. You're looking right at him. I'd like to ask a few questions. About my stage line? Yes. Didn't Jennings give you information about the Mosley line? Yes, but And I... you admit being in touch with him, eh? Yes, there's no secret about it. <laughs> and there's no secret about who is to blame for the murder of my friends and the stealing of my stage and team, eh? Maybe the law can't prove you're behind those killings. But I have all the proof I need. Dad! Hold it, Mosley. Put down that gun. Mr. Sure, I'll give you one slim chance to save your life. Name the men you hired to do your dirty work and tell me where to find them. Then I'll turn you over to the law. Otherwise... Otherwise, you'll shoot me. Is that what you want me to believe? You'd better believe it. But I don't. You're not a killer. Furthermore, you're smart enough to know you'd hang if you killed me. You think a jury'd hang me for shooting you? <laughs> not bad, you fool. Not when Jennings tells how you tried to buy my stage line and how when I refused to sell you threatened to get it by hook or crook. Mosley, I never made a threat of... Maybe not in so many words. But Big Bill could read between the lines of your letter. I never tried to buy a stage line. And I never wrote a letter to either you or Bill Jennings. Mosley, I'm not even an Easterner. Oh, not an Easterner. Oh, no, I'm the man who found your garden driver yesterday. An Indian was with me. We were with the driver when he died. The sheriff said two men rode away. Yes, we didn't want to answer questions. We tried to find the killers, but they hid their trail. You you say you are not an Easterner? I'm the same as you, a Texan. And I want this country rid of thieves and killers who make our highways dangerous. Well, I... Now, give me that gun. Thanks, David. I'm not satisfied about you. I'll have to take the gun before someone is... Hurt. Hold it. Don't come near. I'll shoot. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Jim Mosley held his gun pointed at the Lone Ranger, who was disguised as an Easterner. Don't come near. I'll shoot. He was convinced that the man in Eastern clothes was responsible for the loss of a stage and team and the murder of a guard and driver. The Lone Ranger moved fast. You're not going to shoot anyone. Will the fold it? Here, Jane. You take care of your father's gun. Cold-blooded, downright murder. How did you know my name? I've heard of you and your dad. Coming right into the teeth of the gun and never batting an eyelash. Mr. Hay, I reckon that proves you're not an Easterner. It takes a man from Texas to do what you just did. But Dad read it when a man lives under the Texas sun for any length of time. It... <laughs> My disguise included makeup to conceal the tan. What? You, who the Sam Hill are you? Does Mr. Jennings think you're an Easterner? Yes. I gave him the impression that I might open a factory here in Ranceville. That gave me an opportunity to ask about shipping facilities. It paved the way to ask questions about your stage line. What did Big Bill tell you? He said you might be selling out. He's wrong. Eh? He said that facilities would be greatly improved when more money was put into the stage line. If he thinks the Eastern outfit can scare me into selling out... Him, he told me more, much more. Yeah? Yes, more than he meant to tell me. He showed me the letters from the company in the East. Oh, those letters, yes, I saw them. Those letters may hang, Big Bill. What do you mean? Hang him. I think we'll find that there is no Eastern company interested in your stage line. What? I learned something in his office that convinced me that Big Bill himself is the one who wants to buy you out. You mean... That Big Bill is behind the loss of your friends and property. I can't believe Well, if that's it. true... What happened yesterday is only the beginning. You've been hit. But you'll be hit harder. You'll be smashed. Unless you fight back. I will fight back. Gene, give me the gun. Sit down, Mosley. You can't fight Big Bill with a six-gun. Well, then tell me how I can fight him, if what you say is true. That is why I came here. All right, Tixon. Talk. The Lone Ranger outlined a plan and discussed the details of the plan with Jim Mosley and his daughter. After the conference, still posing as an Easterner, he went to his hotel and took a room. On the following day, Jim Mosley went to the bank to talk to Big Bill Jennings. Jennings was sympathetic. I was mighty sorry to hear about your hard luck, Mosley. I understand the sheriff's men found your horses this yes, morning. Yes, they were wandering loose in the Badlands. And what about the stagecoach? They found that, too. The ashes of it. It had been burned. Yeah, that's a shame. Who'd want to hurt you? You have no enemies. Maybe it wasn't personal. Maybe it was business. Business? Yes. Jennings, you showed me some letters from an Easterner who wanted to buy me out. Oh, yes, Mr. Uh, Tupping. Yes, I have his letters here in my desk. Never mind getting them out. I, uh, I've been wondering if Tupping is behind the attack of my stage. Yeah. You uh, told me how some of those Easterners got what they wanted by hook or crook. Of course, I had in mind bribery and things of that sort. It's hard to believe Tupping would resort to murder. Oh, it couldn't have been Tupping. Jim, he's over a thousand miles from here. He might have hired gunslingers for his dirty work. Yeah, well, that's true, Jim. But what would be his motive? Maybe he wants to put me out of business. Break me. He wouldn't care about the loss of a stage and a few horses if he could buy me out. It's the franchise he wants. That's the most valuable thing I've got. Well, Jim, you, you may be right, but you'll never prove it. Yes, I know that. And if you are right, there may be more attacks on your stagecoaches. That's just the point, Jennings. I'm getting on in years. I want things peaceful. I I don't like robbing and killing. I just want to live quiet. Yeah, I don't blame you, Jim. You've worked hard all your life, Bill, up a business. You could sell out now. Take things easy. I'm willing to sell out. At a fair price. Well, you'd have a hard time getting more than a tupping off. I did. I'd like to deal with him direct. What do you mean? Instead of through you, Jennings. What? Well, no offense, you. friend. If he'd come here and see my outfit, he might make a better offer. At any rate, I want to talk to him and do business face to face. Well, I don't know whether he'd be willing to come all the way from the east or not. He'll come if he wants to deal with me. All right, Jim. Uh, I'll write him today. That night, the Lone Ranger went to the camp where Tonto had been waiting. He told his Indian friend what he had learned and what had been done. So now, Tonto, 
Still, Jennings knows that Jim will not do business unless he meets the Easterner face to face. Oh. I think Jennings will have word from Mosley that the Easterner's coming here. It take long time for letter come from East. Yes. We'll probably be here for a couple of weeks. Oh. You stay in town posing as man from East? Yes. And you stay here until I come for you. Uh uh-huh. Rest plenty good for horses. And it'll give time to overhaul gear. I'll uh, I'll be in touch with you, Tonto. As soon as we hear that Mr. Topping is on his way, we'll prepare for the next move. During the next two weeks, the sheriff sought in vain for the outlaw gang. And during those two weeks, the Lone Ranger continued his role as an eastern manufacturer. He lived at the hotel and spent much time inspecting possible locations for a factory. Then, early in the afternoon, he was walking past the stage line office. Jane Mosley was standing in the open door. She gestured. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Jane. You're looking well. I hoped you would pass. Anything new? Yes, it's come. Good. Bill Jennings came here a few minutes ago. He told Dad that he had a letter from Mr. Tupping. He said that Tupping would arrive on the next stage after the letter. That means he'll be on the stage that arrives tomorrow morning. That's what we've been waiting for. Where is your father? He went to the bank with Mr. Jennings. I'll see your father tonight at his home, just as we planned. I'll tell him. Ask him to have the sheriff there. The Lone Ranger rode away from Ranceville. In camp, he outlined his plan to Tonto while removing his disguise. That evening, the sheriff was in the Mosley home with the stage light owner and his daughter. He talked at length about his futile efforts to locate the gang that had attacked the stage. Presently, there was a knock on the back door. The back door. I'll go, Dan. I reckon it's our friend. Oh, Sheriff, I've been waiting for that man. He has a plan to catch those crooks. Who is he? I don't know his name, Sheriff. His real name, that is. But he's a Texas man, and I'd trust him all the way. Glad to hear you say that. Great Scott. Steady, Sheriff. You need no gun tonight. Hey, Jane, is it? Is He's it? the same man, Dad. Well, the voice is the same, but, mister, you look bigger in me. And more like a man who has lived beneath the Texas sun? Yes. When I see a mask, I think of an outlaw. That's why Tom and I rode away the first time you saw us, Sheriff. The first time? Yes, on the stage trail beside the dead guard and driver. What? Then you you didn't me. get close enough to see that I was masked. Well, you're high-tailed. I didn't want to answer questions. I still say a mask is a sign of an outlaw. In that case, Sheriff, you and Jim will feel like outlaws tomorrow when you're hiding your faces behind bandanas. What? The Sheriff hasn't heard our plan yet. If you think I'm going to hide my face... I think you'll agree to it, Sheriff, when you've heard what I'm going to say. <laughs> The following morning, the sheriff wore a bandana to conceal his face, and so did Toto and Jim Mosley. They were hidden behind a boulder near the stagecoach trail with the Lone Ranger. When they heard the stage approaching from the east, they drew their guns. Uh, if this plan misfires, I'll be laughed out of town. I'm trusting the bash man, Jim. Get ready. As the stage drew near, the four men leaped into view with their six guns barking. Up the team! Rain in there! Oh, we did it! Step down from that seat and keep your hands away from guns. Or you'll get the same as the other garden driver. Are you uh, carrying a passenger? Here we uh, We got one man. Step out of the stage, mister. Now, hold on, boys. Take it easy. You'll have to walk the rest of the way. We're taking the stage. That's a pass, then. I got a hunch I'm working for the same boss as you boys. We know what we're doing. We're following instructions. Well, that's what I'm doing. Who gave you instructions? Does the name Big Bill mean anything to you? What are you doing on that stage if you're working for Big Bill? <laughs> so we are working for the same boss. Answer my question. I'm supposed to pose as an Easterner named Tupping to put through a deal. If you're from the East, how could you get orders from Big Bill Jennings? Oh, I went part way to the East after I got the orders. Oh, uh... Did you work for Big Bill on the last deal? Yes, I was the last going red and the others. Where are they? They're lying low at Big Bill's house. Sounds like he's telling the truth. I'm still not convinced. Tell me this. What did you do on the last deal? Cut the horses loose and burned the stage. That settles it. He's our man. Why, sure I am, boys. I'm one of you. You'll be one of us as far as Ranceville. That's where we separate. You're going to jail. To jail? I'll uncover my face. You're talking to the law. Take off that bandana, Jim. Watch me. 
The sheriff. And Jim Moses. No, no, it's a double cross. It's a trick. I'll handcuff him. You men bring him to town in the state. We'll go on ahead. There's business to be taken care of. <laughs> A little before noon, Big Bill Jennings came out of his bank and saw the sheriff and Jim Mosley approaching. Well, Jim, I'm expecting Mr. Tubby when the stage arrives. A short of dummy buyer, huh, Jennings? Uh, uh, dummy? You're the one who wanted my stage line? Why, that's preposterous. You figured to make me sell cheap by burning one stage and hidden that others would be burned. And you wanted an unknown Easterner to be blamed. Sheriff, has Jim lost his mind? Nope, you're under arrest, Bill. But, but this is unheard of. It is hard to believe that you're a crook. But I've got the sworn testimony of Lasco and Blackie and all the others. We got Blackie on the stage, the others in your home. No, no. There are two charges of murder and robbing the mail and burning a stage. Well, there must be a mistake. Yes, it was, and you made it. You showed the tupping letters to the man who poses an Eastern manufacturer. What do you mean? You wrote those letters to yourself, Bill. They never went through the mail. They were never in envelopes. You see, that man noticed right away that the letters had never been folded. Oh, uh, no. A thing like that. Trapped. I'm trapped by a little thing like that. It's those little things that catch crooks. It's those little things that are noticed by the lone ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.